Hey there YouTube, this is SJM4306 and all I gotta say is yee ye yee Uh, <laughs> I was contacted by a manufacturer with something very different than I've ever tried and I always wanted to try these and they're pretty pricey usually. Uh, not sure the price off of, of this off the top of my head. I'll put a little, you know, notification doohickey thing down there what the price is as of editing this video. But yeah, I've always wanted to test this out because I have game consoles and usually I, I have a TV in the same room, but usually someone else is using the TV so I cannot play said game console at my convenience. This would solve all that. Uh, my idea is to make some kind of portable screen abomination with this. <laughs> and uh, yeah, this is a wireless HDMI transmitter and receiver set which is just fantastic. So the idea is you have your game console or whatever plugged in and you have the transmitter plugged into it, which I'm guessing this is going to be the transmitter and this is probably the receiver. Might have gotten that backwards, but anyway. So then you have your, your monitor, your screen in a completely different other place and as long as it's within range, which we'll take a look what the range is in a sec, but yeah, you can plug it in and it acts as if it's just a long HDMI cord. Now, clearly, this will insert a little bit of latency, uh, depending on any kind of processing and also sending it wirelessly over. So, yeah, maybe, like, games of punch out or something might not be so great. Anything with critical timing. But, yeah, I mostly play, like, turn-based RPGs and whatnot. So, it's not that big of a deal for me in puzzle games and whatnot. So, yeah, uh, it says 4K UHD. It's capable of that's nice. Uh, home, it's saying use in office, home theater... No internet required because it sends directly from the transmitter to the receiver. And multi-device mirroring, so sweet. And yeah, we have wireless HD transmitter receiver kit, and it says the same thing. And apparently it uses Wi-Fi. That is like its own Wi-Fi that it, it makes its own like hotspot, sort of. So yeah, you don't need a network for this to attach to because it is its own network, effectively. It says it uses 802.11 AC, so that would be Wi-Fi, firmly within the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz band. Interesting, the company is based in Lithuania. That's cool. And contact Tony. <laughs> just just tell him I sent you. But anyway, yeah, uh, this ought to be interesting. I always wanted to test one of these out, so I jumped at the chance when they asked me if I was interested. I was like, oh, yes. <laughs> Absolutely. So let's just... Uh, Tear a little hole there, open this up. So, open this up. There we go. Good presentation. Like foam in here. No expenses spared. Yeah, that's a really nice, like, cut out foam to the exact shape of everything. We have the instructions, which only five pages of English. So that means this is going to be incredibly easy to set up. Hopefully it just works when we plug it in, which it should. So yeah, that's interesting. Apparently, I wonder because it's using Wi-Fi, do you not even need the transmitter dongle if you're using Android? If, if you can cast directly to this, that would be fantastic as well. Because uh, let's see Android system. Yeah, you just turn on the screen mirroring directly from your phone. That just made this like 10 times more useful to me <laughs> yeah now i'm really excited about this okay we have the uh the propellers these are actually the antennae i'll pull it out later but yeah you get two of these so you can set them at different angles depending on where you have this placed in your house and where you want to direct the uh the signal and yeah and they rotate 90 degrees and they have these uh little screw terminals here yeah it's very nice we have the, tra oh, this is a transmitter. That's a receiver. Huh, I was hoping it was the other way around because this is very small. Uh, I would be able to fit this like in a small box with an LCD. Uh, the receiver board is apparently very large comparatively. So that might be kind of difficult, might make it less portable, let's just say. But yeah, this is apparently the transmitter. And you have a big button here. I guess it's like the pair button or to turn it on or something you have a little rubber footy so it doesn't skid around how nice is that and like ventilation holes and yeah on the sides as well and a short little probably like three four inch cord 
and it just plugs straight into your HDMI. I kind of maybe would have liked to see uh, like an HDMI port on the board here so that you can use a different cable because if this cable breaks at any point then got to get a new transmitter or do a lot of soldering. But yeah, I'm not seeing any power. It says supply voltage, 5 volts, 2 amps. Oh, here, here we go. So I was going to say, I know HDMI doesn't transmit power through it. So yeah, you do have to supply it with uh, 5 volts via USB-C here. I'm sure it comes with an adapter. Yes, it does. With plenty of uh, international tips. That's cool. There we go. And here's the adapter for that. This is my plug, so this is my plug. So I'm going to just uh, stick this in here, and I guess it just kind of, what do I do? Click it, rotate. Okay, I see. Yeah, that's actually a really nice compact adapter. That's one of the smaller, like, fully adjustable per region adapters I've seen. Just has a USB port on the bottom. This is... Yeah, multi-region, 100 to 240 volts, 50, 60 hertz, and 5 volts, 2 amps. So 10 watts, yeah. Tiny little adapter. I like that. And we have the uh, foam bracket. And this guy is the receiver then. And yeah, we have the other antenna. Why do I keep saying antenna? We have the other antenna. <laughs> Uh, we have the BNC jacks on the back. This is this is metal. <laughs> wow, this is really well built. That's interesting. There is a little protective film, so I guess uh, we got to do the thing. Oh yeah, it's sort of a ritual by now. But yeah, I guess that's where the power indication is. It's a little bit of schmutz here from the sticker, but yeah, that rubs off. So yeah, hopefully that lights up because that would look cool. And uh, interestingly, they got like some kind of apple beveled chromed edge thing going on there. That's interesting. We have a headphone jack, so it does transmit audio along with your HDMI video. We have a USB-C port. Uh, you have to supply power to this as well, which I'm just realizing we have uh, one adapter. So I'm guessing maybe the adapters for you just pick one and the other one, probably the, I don't know. You would need two adapters realistically, but maybe like the transmitter is low enough power because it's significantly smaller. So maybe this guy can be um, just powered off of like the USB port on a TV. And for the receiver, then you would need a, this separate supply. But yeah, and then we have the full size HDMI port and it has VGA too. That's actually really cool. So that means I can use an old monitor that uh, only has VGA, which I have like stacks of them. <laughs> so that makes this even more and more useful than I thought it would be. Wow, I like that. Reset hole on the bottom, little rubber feeties, ventilation holes, just says a wireless HD extender. And yeah, screw these on. And you got your little rabbit ears. It actually does surprisingly look a lot like a little rabbit. And we have all the cables for everything. And it does come with, for the receiver, a tiny little short HDMI cable. That's it for the unboxing. Let's actually fire this up and run it through its paces. I kind of want to hook this up to my PS4 first, and then maybe I'll try casting from my tablet to here to see what the lag is on the video and all that kind of good information. That I'm sure you guys, if you wanted to use this for gaming and media consumption, that kind of stuff is going to be kind of important. So yeah, let's uh, get set up for that, and I'll see you guys in a sec. Okay, uh, let's turn down the volume on this a little bit. I think I found the perfect way to play PlayStation 4 games without requiring you to be tethered to the PlayStation 4. Anyway, my uh, PS4 is sitting in the opposite side of the house downstairs, so easily about probably 50 feet away through one floor and multiple doorways. And I have it connected to this uh, Nebula Anch Anchor Nebula um, projector and this is a 720p capable like 500 lumens uh it is battery powered i just have it charging right now but you can see here i have the screen set up and this is with you know during broad daylight so maybe not ideal conditions but yeah i have this set up i do notice that uh definitely at this 
distance, I am start starting to get some lag. So probably have to just twist the antennae, antennas, antennae on the, uh, the receiver unit here. And yeah, actually that increased it significantly. So yeah, just gonna... Yeah, so I would say, I'm just going through here. So yeah, there's definitely perceptible lag. Uh, it kind of comes and goes though. And I think maybe if I would orient these antennas a little bit better and maybe have them facing the unit or something, I might be able to get it a little bit better. But yeah, keep in mind, this is actually pretty far from the uh, receiver and I do have quite a number of, uh, of 2.4 gigahertz wireless devices on my network. So plus not to mention, I'm using the DualShock 4 controller and that is also transmitting on 2.4 gigahertz the full distance as well, which my PS4 is downstairs. I know this isn't ideal. You normally would just want the game console in the same room, but I've had a dream for the longest time to be able to play uh, my PS4 on the toilet. <laughs> and this could very well make that possible. Yeah, not counting much easier, much saner methods of uh, of being able to play PS4 wirelessly. <laughs> of course, I could always opt for the Vita, but just having it on a projector fully wireless is also pretty, pretty cool. So, yeah. Yeah, so what I'm noticing is uh, it might, might be uh, a combination of controller lag over wireless from a pretty long distance plus video lag is uh making this not so ideal it definitely seems to kind of teleport after a little while so maybe i'm going to try to move this over kind of closer to the uh the receiver so maybe about 50 feet through walls and obstructions is maybe a bit too much to ask for this so my upstairs bathroom probably would not be much better uh, maybe the downstairs bathroom <laughs> portable ps4 gaming would be okay in that situation but yeah let me set up in a uh, another room and see if i can get at least usable video and control frames okay apology for the handheld setup this is sort of impromptu i've moved it to my uh my other bedroom yeah anyway uh i have this set up i love the fact that this projector has a usb output i can use it to power <laughs> the receiver that's fantastic Okay, so here we are. Uh, let's just try and turn on the PS4. Hopefully, it'll wake up. This is the splash screen you see uh, while it's waiting for something to be received. So hopefully, uh, eventually this will... Looks like something happened, just symbol disappeared. Okay, there we go, so yeah. Looks like we are in here, and now this is considerably smoother. This is actually playable. So yeah, uh, this room is actually above where my PS4 is sitting in my living room right now. So it's probably like 20 feet away, 25 feet downstairs through a ceiling. And this is definitely playable. When I was in that other room, I was... Uh, on the other end of the house so i was probably closer to like about 50 feet and through a wall so yeah uh there is a limitation for this uh my house wi-fi is not so great in it if i'm being honest so that also could have contributed i have a lot of devices all attached to my wi-fi at once so anyway yeah this is uh working i can bring up the menu i can uh i can exit out there you go. It's like it's pretty much instantaneous. X. There we go. So yeah. Let me get to a point where I'm actually doing something in the game and then I'll get back to you guys. Okay, I'm finally to a point where I can actually control the game. I just started this game not that long ago, so anyway gonna try one hand in this so it will be uh interesting certainly just 
Just scraping my face against that wall. Ah, one handed. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, I'm not noticing any drop frames that I can see. Uh, gameplay looks pretty smooth. There was a little bit of stutter on the auto there just for a second. So yeah, you do kind of need to have this within like about 20 or 30 feet of the transmitter it's seeming like. But uh, it seems to be fine. Once you... Ooh, yeah, there is some stutter in that. Okay, yeah. Let's just uh, back out. Yeah, this, for the most part, it seems pretty solid. There are moments where audio will drop out or it'll drop a few frames. And I'm guessing that's kind of due to the range that I'm using it in, the environment, um, the location with other like Wi-Fi devices that could be interfering with it uh, and all that. But yeah. I mean, this this will work. I would actually, I'll probably make a follow-up video for that. I do kind of want to pop it open and see how small the PCB is and see if I could make a portable handheld, sort of like a Vita, but uh, that you, basically just like a wireless uh, DualShock controller and an LCD in the center and uh, just have kind of the board from this in there. I think that would be kind of neat, uh, sort of a wireless all-in-one controller doohickey thing. Okay, yeah, so I tweaked around with the antenna positions, and yeah, it actually does affect quite a bit. If I move it up here, I guess it's blocking some of the signal. If I put it back here, uh, the frame rates are a lot steadier. Generally better, audio doesn't stutter as much, so yeah, definitely uh, kind of the placement. I guess both the transmitter and the receiver is really important. I just have the receiver plugged into the back of my PS4, and it's sort of behind the TV. So probably not an ideal placement on that either. Uh, one thing I would like to see maybe on the receiver or the transmitter side, if they had one of these separate antennas, um, it has like an inbuilt antenna so that there's no wire or anything that sticks out. But maybe if they had like a directional antenna that you could tweak that, that could make uh, the transmission signal a little bit stronger. Uh, but yeah, overall, this is actually really cool. Uh, just being able to to project it onto a wall and just play PS4 without you know needing to be right next to the uh, the console itself. Let's actually uh, shut this guy down and see about uh, projecting from like one of my phones or something. Maybe playing some PS2 games uh, wirelessly through this. Let's see about setting that up.
because this should support Miracast. Okay, so on here I opened Smart View, so this is for the Miracast wireless screen mirroring, and it popped up. So I should be able to uh, just start this, and it should wirelessly cast to the display now. So let's just see. Hopefully, this uh, kicks in. Now this should be transmitting directly from my phone to the uh, the receiver over here, so there should be absolutely like minimal latency, if 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 at all. Uh, let's see, change, sure, whatever. So yeah, so here we are. Let's uh, fire up some Aether SX two. <laughs> And uh, let's just do some Curse of Darkness, why not? Now, given I'm doing this one-handed, <laughs> this is not going to be, it's going to be suboptimal, in fact. But yeah, you can see, okay, this is actually a pretty good test of, uh, of latency. Seems pretty damn near uh, instantaneous. Let's just uh, continue the game. Yeah, that's pretty snappy. So yeah, this receiver is pretty decently uh, fast in terms of like uh, receiving the video. So it's just a matter of making sure that the transmitter is within uh, transmission distance. How, do, how? How? Can't can't see the door. There we go. <laughs> One-handed PS2 game playing, not optimal, but yeah. Yeah, this is awesome. <laughs> this is exactly what I want. Uh, well, with two hands and maybe a Bluetooth controller actually controlling instead of the phone touchscreen. This would be awesome. Yeah, that's kind of crazy now that I am playing a PS2 game on my phone at full at full speed. I mean, it's it's running there. You can see like 60 frames a second. Uh and I'm wirelessly casting it from the phone to a receiver, to a projector. And then, yeah, the day that we, the technology that we have nowadays is kind of ridiculous if you really think about it. And just the loading speeds on that were <laughs> really good. So, yeah. What is that all the way out there? Uh, it's an item I never picked up. Potion. There you go. So yeah, <laughs> it's uh, kind of crazy when you think about what kind of technology we have in our pockets. So yeah, just exit out of that. Oh. Exit game. So yeah, and if you guys are interested, I actually uh, found a mod that if you have uh, Half-Life and Half-Life 2, and I think even uh, yeah, Portal I have installed, someone actually modded the uh, Source Engine onto Android so you can play them on your phone, just like it's normal. But yeah, uh, that's a thing that is uh, possible nowadays, and so this device is actually really interesting because not only can it be used to send wireless HDMI, but you could use it with any tablet or phone that uh, supports wireless video casting. So that is is really interesting. Huh, that is interesting. Why are the cars floating above the street? <laughs> uh, that is a bug. I just found a bug for my wallpaper. The cars are floating on the street. Huh, as well as the lights too. That's um, okay. Anyway, okay, addendum. I couldn't see that there were obvious screws under these little rubber feet and not open it so i did and uh i accidentally stripped out one of the screws so yeah oopsie my fault i used a uh, screwdriver that i guess was a little bit uh missized to what the screws were so anyway uh huh i just realized there's a physical on off button that i don't think i've ever realized i just left it on and just powered it Okay, huh, that's interesting. Yeah, 
Anyway, uh, yeah, so here we have the actual insides. Interestingly enough, the Wi-Fi is, it looks like it's handled by a separate, like, module, like a daughter board module, and just the antennas uh, are mounted on the board. We have what appears to be some Nanya, is that RAM or Flash? So I'm guessing the CPU is going to be on the other side there. And what looks to be a separate chip for the uh, video encoder, it's between the VGA and the HDMI. Ha ha ha, very interesting. We have our USB input, maybe some regulation or something or other there. And our audio output there. Uh, let's see if I can wiggle this board out. Ha <laughs> ha, I was victorious. So yeah, uh, interesting little plastic bracket covering the... Uh, I guess it's like supposed to fill the hole. Uh, maybe it was easier than milling it just to have a plastic bracket to fill the rest of the hole. They oversized it for the VGA port. Anyway, there's a reset button on the bottom here. And if we flip it over, yep, exactly as I thought. The uh, main processor is on here. It is an AMS 272, looks like. Uh, we have our flash memory that's undoubtedly going to contain the firmware for that. We have the crystal oscillator for that. We have two local supply rails. These are um, DC-DC converters. They're generating two different voltages at least. Uh, for this guy, there is the LED that shines through the, the top there. That's going to be the blue LED. Diffusion is actually pretty good. Uh, it stood off a little while, and there's an extra kind of opaque, slightly opaque material in between. And yeah, this looks like it's actually two pieces. This feels like maybe steel or aluminum probably aluminum and the uh the case itself is probably machined aluminum interesting that instead of just having this as one piece it's actually two separate pieces you can see one the walls are anodized but the uh this base piece is not and yeah um let's see yeah other than that not really much going on in here this is actually much simpler than i thought it'd be Looks like we do have several test points. Uh, I see TX and RX there, so there's some serial business going on there. Yeah, very interesting. Build quality is actually, build quality is pretty good. With the exception of my hand-fistedness stripping out one of the screws. <laughs> yeah, um, I just I just really wanted to get inside here and see what was inside and show you guys as well. So anyway, yeah, if you guys are interested, uh, check the Yihua uh, wireless HDMI transmitter and receiver set out. And uh, if you have a specific need to wirelessly cast uh, between, you know, the source and whatever you're watching it on, uh, this might do the trick for you guys. Anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.